Hey there YouTube, how's it going? Goon here coming at you guys again with another review, a very exciting review at that because today we are going to be going over Coded's Morph Bag, something that I'm just completely enthralled with. The bag that I'm gonna be reviewing today comes from Chris, the owner of Coded, and he so graciously gifted me the bag to do a review on it. This is the first gift that I've received to review on the channel, and I am so, so gracious to Chris for that matter. But at the very same time, I would not be reviewing this bag if I didn't think that it was incredible in more ways than one, and that is exactly what I'm gonna be talking about today. I'm gonna to be getting a little bit into Coded, I'm gonna be getting a little bit into Dyneema, which is what the main fabric on this bag is, that you can visibly see at least. Like every video, I'm gonna be getting into all of the quirks and details of the bag as well as what it comes with. And then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna be getting into some pros and cons of the bag in the two weeks that I've been able to use it uh, very vigorously at that. So Coded is the love child of Chris or Chris JSW. I'll leave his at right here. Chris is a avid lover of technical fashion, uh, I, I suppose. Uh, a lot of the stuff that you see from his brand Coded are meticulously crafted small batch goods that he himself makes from procuring of the fabric to the sewing to everything. It's, it's all done by him. There are no factories involved. He is the one who makes all of these pieces. He buys the individual components and sews it all together himself. What this allows Chris to be able to do is create something that really encaptures the vision that he wants with every individual product itself. And it really tries to imbue this worldview that he has when it comes to the bags, the accessories, and the dialogue that he wants to have with the consumer. With that in mind, every collection tries to tell a little bit of a story. And I really like that kind of aspect of the brand. I think that a lot of brands are just these nameless conglomerations that kind of just churn out product. And a lot of the brands that I really love nowadays are ones that are able to tell a story alongside the product itself. And Chris really does that well with his product. You'll get a little bit of that design language and what he's trying to get across as I get into all the details and quirks of the bag. But the one big detail that I wanted to go over is the main construction of this bag in particular, which is Dyneema. If you are unfamiliar with Dyneema, I don't really blame you because it is seldomly used within the fashion realm at that. But Dyneema is a polyethylene fiber that's been developed by the Netherlands company DSM. Dyneema has been really well utilized within the police force for creating armor, but it also has been used for climbing companies and making ropes, that kind of stuff. And it has slowly started to proliferate outwards into a bunch of other markets where this type of extremely strong fiber would be useful. And that's just it. Dyneema is incredibly well loved for the overall strength that this fiber has. It's a real miracle fiber and that the fiber itself is super strong, stronger than steel for that matter. At the same time, similar to X-Pack, it has a really phenomenal weight to durability ratio, being a fiber that can actually float in water if you let it rest on top of a riverbed. You really want to do that. Dyneema also has innate water wicking qualities to it as well, which make it really fantastic for the technical side of things. And that also lets it bleed into the fashion aspect of things too. I'll leave a link to the article that had all of this information down below and you're more than welcome to read that. Um, and I think you should because I think Dyneema is gonna be seen more and more often through bag companies, clothing companies, and everywhere in between that decide to experiment with something that's just so technically savvy. With Coded and Dyneema out of the way, I can get into the bag itself. And to start off, I wanna mention what came with the bag. When you pull the bag out of the box, the first thing that you're gonna see is that it comes in one of these nice large plastic bags that keep it nice and clean, that kind of thing. But on top of that, you're also gonna get a little package that comes with some individual rubberized patches with the Coded brand code on them, and I, I love this. As a matter of fact, I've put the longer molly webbing patch that the bag comes with onto my acronym 6TS to just kind of spread out the inspiration to other bags in my repertoire. The patches I received were two white ones in this classic kind of construction, but then also a black on black one that has a code on it as well, a little bit more sleek, a little bit more subtle. Um, that's the one that I have on my acronym 6TS. On top of that, Chris gives you this larger bag that also contains a little bit of photo paper that goes into the ethos and the design premise behind the bag itself. It gives you all the details, but it also gives you a little bit of 
background as to how exactly it was made, what the inspiration was, and where it can be found out in the environment. Chris did a really lovely photo shoot out in the woods using this, and um, I really love it for that reason. Um, I'll let you uh, pause the screen right here. You can check it out for yourself. But this is what I mean by storytelling and that this just gives a little bit of extra background history to the product itself and it's something that makes me want to wear the bag even more. I know that this is made by one guy and that makes it special in and of itself, but having a more metaphorical reason as to why the bag was made is always lovely and that's something that I really look for nowadays with a lot of the stuff that I buy. Now that we're done with the pleasantries of what comes with the bag as well as who made it what it's made out of, that kind of thing. We can get into the bag itself, starting up at the very top and going down to the bottom, getting into all the quirks and features as I usually do. If we look up at the very top of the bag, we have one of the most defining details, which are the two tote bag straps. But don't be fooled, this is not just a tote bag, and I will be getting into that later in the video. The way that these tote bag straps work is that they connect at these individual anchor points that are on the front face as well as the back face of the bag. They go up to the apex, which goes over your shoulder, and bada bing bada boom, you've got a fantastic tote bag strap. The way that Chris has meticulously folded and stitched these individual straps really creates a very sturdy and a very anchoring strap that goes over your shoulder. The thing that I've loved the most about using this bag in the two weeks that I've had it is how natural it feels on my shoulder because of this construction. It's something that I really applaud Chris for. I know I said that I'd mention it later, but you can't talk about these tote bag straps without talking about the way in which the bag morphs in the first place. If we look at the front facing strap, we can see that it moves along these rails that are on the front face of the bag. And if we push those down through this window that Chris has created, you can see that it really kind of anchors itself at the middle with the fidlock buttons out and activated. What this allows you to do is then take the strap that is on the back face of the bag, fold the entire half of the bag over, and then get it into its messenger bag mode, allowing you to then be able to use the messenger bag strap that is attached to the bag. This is the really cool and interesting thing about the Morph bag in the first place. It's the real unique selling point. You have this really well-designed messenger bag when you'd like to use it that stays really well anchored to your back, but you also have a more casual tote bag format which I personally use more, whenever you'd like, whenever you wanna use it. And I think that that's what makes this bag so special. If we move to the back face of the bag, we can see where this messenger bag strap resides. The way that it works is very user friendly and it is something that I think a lot of people who are in a more technical fashion will be used to. When you pull this strap over your shoulder in the typical messenger bag format, you'll notice that there's this buckle that has a nylon bit of webbing hanging off of it, um, a little nylon string at that. With this just indicates is that the overall messenger bag strap is also a quick release strap, which is something that I really applaud Chris for doing in his own unique way. The way that it works is that by pulling the larger outermost strap down in a dynamic way, you can hoist the bag up onto your back, nice and tight, nice and well for more vigorous situations where you need the bag to be a little bit more secure and a little bit more out of the way. When you need to drop the bag down to waist height, you can pull this nylon ribbon to let the bag quick release down, and then you can take the strap off and then turn it into its tote bag format if you so choose. I really have to applaud Chris in being able to create something that is really user friendly, being able to switch between these two formats, and the messenger bag strap really spares no expense in being really well crafted as well. You'd think that there's some unbalanced portion of the bag, one being the messenger bag part or the tote bag part because one thing's got to give, but they both work really equally at that. On top of that, if you want the bag to solely act as a tote bag, this messenger bag strap can be detached as the anchor points have clips on them. So you can unthread it from the anchor points that are on this back face along with the mesh, and you can have it solely as a tote bag. And I think that that's a great little bit of customizability that the bag has. It really morphs in more ways than one. The last thing that I want to mention about the messenger bag strap is the fact that it also incorporates a three point system along with it just so that it can be even more secure. Down at the base of the bag, there's one row of molly webbing that you can not only attach mods and other accessories to, but it is where you will find the main anchor point for this three-point system, as well as the other anchor point, which is on the strap itself. This three-point system incorporates a slide buckle on it, a fidlock slide buckle at that, and this just allows you to be able to anchor it quickly using this slide buckle, but then also tighten it down to your body using the way in which you can pull it with your left hand outward and really get it up onto your back even tighter. 
I find this strap to be particularly useful if you are a cyclist or a motorcycler as this really lets it not move or give in any kind of way. It's the same way in which a three-point system works on other bags like a Orbit Gear bag or an Acronym bag. And I think it's just that extra bit of touch for the user experience and so that it's ready for multiple scenarios. If we open up the Messenger bag once again and get it into its tote bag format, we can see all the pocket detailing that is on the front face of the bag. This front pocket is really interesting in that it incorporates a lot of different little individual functions that make it work really well while also being really simple at that. What I mean by this is that this individual front pocket is delineated into a smaller pocket, but then a larger pocket as well. And at the very same time, you can access it using all one zipper. So while you're getting two pockets, you can still access it from the main front facing zipper. And I love it for that reason. One of the zippers is a more classic YKK silver zipper with a rubberized tip. And the other one is a, another YKK zipper, but it has a long bit of nylon ribbon coming off of it, allowing you to be able to have a larger anchor point for which you can unzip the bag. And it's something that I end up using a lot for it. its longer aspect more often than not. What I mean by this is that while it's in its tote bag format, I find it really easy to find that zipper with my left arm to open up the pocket or with my right arm accordingly. And I really like to use it for that reason. The other thing that I find really interesting about this pocket is that it's expandable. And what I mean by this is that the way that Chris has pleated it in its construction, it really has a flat face when nothing's in it. But the moment that you decide to start putting stuff in there, the bottom of the pocket will start to expand and really account for everything that you're throwing into it, allowing for a lot of stuff to be stored, which is something that I've done recently for work. This is something that I love about Chris's design philosophy because it's these small, really implicit user functionalities that allow the bag to have a wide range of scenarios in which they can be used. And it allows the bag to really kind of expand and contract to your use case. And I love it for that reason. With expandability in mind, if we move just below this pocket, we can see that there's two rows of olive molly webbing, allowing you to be able to put more attachments onto your bag if you so choose. These could be anything from the coated patches that Chris includes with the bag itself to something like this Crooked Saint mod that I have attached already that carries some extra snacks, that kind of thing, something that I love dearly. At the very same time, if you decide to buy more stuff from Chris's ecosystem, he has individual mods that could also find themselves on this molly webbing, and that's something else that I love. Being able to give the bag new life, not only in the way that it morphs between its two modes, but also being able to expand its carrying capacity is something that I really thoroughly enjoy about the bag, and it's something that I really enjoy about more technical bags in general. Chris just does it in a very elegant way, and I, again, applaud him for that. Just under the molly webbing, we have the base of the bag, which I think also needs to be mentioned because it has that same expandable design function that the front facing pockets do. The way that Chris has pleated the base of the bag also allows it to be able to expand. And if you look at the bag from the side, you can see that it's very slim in profile, but when you put stuff into it, the entire bag itself expands out a little bit further and just allows you to be able to get a wide variety of stuff in there just creating a little bit more user functions so that while the bag can have a slim appearance when you need it to, it can also puff outwards and carry all the stuff that you'd like. With that in mind, I wanna get into the carrying capacity of this bag because it is actually very, very ideal for me in that. The one thing that I kind of loathed about my 3A1 was the fact that I couldn't get my 15 inch laptop in it, and that's fine. That messenger bag is kind of used for a different use case, but what makes this one so special is that the slightly larger proportions of the bag overall that I will have mentioned earlier really allow for a wide variety of stuff to go into it without feeling like a big overburdened bag like a more typical backpack. As you can see in this B-roll, I'm able to fit a wide variety of stuff, whether it's my 15 inch laptop, like I mentioned earlier, to the charger that it comes with, to water bottles, to magazines, to other relatively slim facing things. Uh, the way that this bag expands allows you to be able to get a lot of really slim facing things all stacked up on top of each other and organized, but then also get a lot of it in there in the first place. And I like it for that reason. A couple of last things that I wanna mention are just some minute details that just add to the comfort and the overall functionality of the bag. On the back of the bag, we have a really nice plush mesh that works well for when it's not only on your back in its messenger format, but when it's up against the side of your body in its tote bag form. And I appreciate Chris for implementing this because a good mesh really can make or break a bag depending on its overall construction. And speaking of construction, if we look on the inside of the bag, you can see that it's constructed of Cordura 1000, a very 
high quality and a very water resistant material, something that really kind of ups the overall water resistant qualities of the bag overall and makes this really good for rainier conditions accordingly. Zooming back out and looking at the bag overall, we can also see that the entire thing has been constructed using these olive seams, really giving the bag a little bit of colorful pop and something that I really enjoy this really earthy olive military green is something that I think is a very nice color and works well in a variety of wardrobes, not just technical. Something that I just wanted to mention is the final detail. The very final detail that I wanted to mention is that under these two rows of molly webbing, there is a little window that has a Velcro strap within it. What Chris mentioned to me when he was thinking about this detail is that once the bag is in its messenger form, you can see that the tote bag strap can dangle around a little bit, even though it is still very much in place. This Velcro strap just allows it to be even more secure and you can thread this Velcro strap over the tote bag strap and really keep it in place. I don't have any B-roll of this, but in my use it's really nice and it's just that extra little bit of security for when you're in a very vigorous situation like a motorcycle riding scenario or something where you're very much on the move. So now that I've talked about all the individual details and quirks, I just wanna get into a couple of pros and cons and then I will let you be on your way. The pros of this bag are obvious. You have a incredibly well-made morphing bag that goes between a messenger bag and a tote bag. So the big pro on this is the versatility of the bag overall. This tote bag not only works well as something that you can use to just go pick up the groceries, but this also works as something that you can use to bring to work because it has laptop carrying space, it has book carrying space if you're just going to a coffee shop when quarantine is over, that kind of thing. It has a lot of function not only in how you can just implicitly put stuff into this tote bag variant of the bag as well as the, you know, pocket, but once you want to get it into that messenger bag form, it really works well there too, and that versatility is just killer. I love being able to go back and forth between these two formats. The second thing that I want to bring up as a pro is the overall design aesthetic of this bag in conjunction with the construction. The construction of this bag incorporates Dyneema and Cordura 1000, as I mentioned earlier, really giving it this robust and light but water resistant quality to it. But Chris also spent no expense in making this bag just look good with its single seam outside and inside face so that it's incredibly profile to the body and very flat, if you will, but then also having these expanding qualities and interesting ways in which he's been able to use the Dyneema texture to really give this a cool wabi-sabi effect and something that really looks futuristic as well. You're getting something that not only looks really cool, but it works really well. And I think everybody who's in a technical fashion looks for that quality when you're getting a bag. It might seem a little bit blunt. It honestly might not even seem that articulate, but the way that Chris has been able to do it is unique. It's good looking and it sets itself apart from a wide variety of other retailers that are making bags that use Dyneema or just have technical qualities to them. The last pro that I wanna mention is the overall customizability of the bag. Now I kinda of mentioned that a little bit with the first portion saying how the bag can morph and that is a fantastic quality. But the customizability also comes in the fact that you can remove the messenger bag strap if you want. You can remove the three point system strap if you want like I have. You can add on mods that you can buy from Chris yourself. You can add on mods that you buy from other companies. You can really do a lot with this bag to really make it your own. And while the bag really does have this cool, very unique look to what Chris has made, the fact that you can really make it your own is what makes it special. And that's what I've felt in the two weeks that I've been able to use it. There's only a couple of cons that I can think. I'm not gonna try and sit here and just praise Chris for everything he's done. There's always, things that can be improved. The first thing that I wanted to mention is that while the morphing aspect of the bag is really awesome, you will find a little bit of an issue turning it back from its tote bag form into its messenger bag form. Stuffing the individual straps down through those windows that he has created is okay, but it can be a little bit clunky at times. And I've talked to him about this as well. He said that he sacrificed the overall function of the bag for the aesthetic quality that it has. He could have a little pulley system to get them back through the holes in the same way that you're able to kind of pull it up, but it just makes it look weird. At the very same time, makes it a little bit, you know, ham-fisted to use at times, and it's just something that I wanna bring up, but it is incredibly minute. The other thing that I wanna bring up is something that's actually a calling card of Chris's other products that he's made in the past, but it's just something that I wanna note, and it's the fact that this bag is incredibly, incredibly profile. When you're looking at this from 
this angle, you can see that there's just one seam. So the entire expansion and kind of carrying capacity of the bag is really restricted to those seams and the little bit of expansion that is at the bottom of the bag and the pleating that he's created. The unfortunate circumstance is that unless you're putting other very you know slim profile things into the tote bag, it can have a hard time of expanding to certain stuff. So you wanna put a pair of shoes in there, you might wanna be careful about that. Even something like my water bottle can feel a little bit tight in there at times, but it's really minute in that. And it also just kind of gives you a circumstance in which you can use this bag. You know exactly what's gonna go in there. It can be used for those circumstances. And um, that's what I found with the bag. So the con is countered easily in that respect. So that's the bag. I am really thoroughly impressed by what Chris has been able to put out. It is something truly special. If you guys are interested in purchasing this bag, it is still available on his website, which is in the description as always. He also has other stuff up there as well that I also very recommend checking out. Very recommend checking out Matt. Fantastic English. But with all of that out of the way, that is the video. Thanks again, Chris, for sending this over. I really appreciate your generosity and letting me show something off new on the channel and show something off that I am just thoroughly happy to own. Um, again, if you wanna check him out, his stuff will be in the description, but that is my video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks again, Chris. And with all that out of the way, gotta say one thing and it's stay stylish. Peace out.